Hi, I'm Kaylin with Mammoth Lakes Tourism, and today I'm with one of my favorite fly fishing guides from the Trout Fitter, Scott Flint. And he's going to help us talk about how to fish with your kids. This segment is brought to you in part by the Indian National Forest that wants to remind you to leave no trace. And that means picking up your trash. I know we're all super annoyed with this fishing line because it gets stuck to everything but it's still trash and we still need to pick it up. We can't just leave it. And your cigarette butts, they're not biodegradable and we all have to deal with them. It's kind of gross. So please pick up your trash. If you have an extra plastic bag in your car, bring it with you, throw your trash in there and then throw someone else's trash in there because we all want to help out each other and we want to keep this place clean, clean, clean for generations and generations to come. Which brings us into our topic of how, you know, generations, the kids, fishing with the kids. And it's such a family activity. You're passing on this for generations. Scott, what do you think is a great age to start kids fishing? Five or six would be the ideal age is what I'm starting to find these days. Um, yeah. I've taught them as low as three and a half, four and a half years old, but their attention span isn't too long, so it's imagine. kind of tough to keep them involved in it. Right, yeah, that seems a little bit difficult. And as I hear, you actually have taught a lot of kids how to fly fish. Is that as difficult as it sounds? Uh, for an instructor or a guide, no. Yeah. But for somebody who doesn't have any experience with it, it would probably be quite the task. Right. It'd be pretty difficult. So either getting a guide or knowing what you're doing is very important when it comes to fly fishing. But let's be honest, a lot of parents are probably not going to go that route. What would be another option for their parents to introduce fishing to kids? Lots of options up here. Mm -hmm. um, we could come out here to the lakes, throw some stuff out here in the lake with a weight and float some bait off of the bottom. Yeah. Um, that's not too active though, so they have a tendency to lose interest in it very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So another option would be a fly in a bubble which is ideal because right. they get to see the bubble, they get to see the fly out there in the water and the fish actually hitting it. So it keeps them involved a little bit more. Yeah. Um, lures are a great uh, tactic out here as well to keep kids involved because they can mm -hmm. throw the lure out, see the lure hit, and then they try to see it coming back in and wiggling and sometimes the fish chasing it as well. So it, it keeps them very entertained. Keeping it fun, entertained. I like how you said you were teaching this girl how to, you know, look for the different bugs around the lake when she kind of lost interest. Tell us a little more about that. Well, we were fishing a river actually, and she, after, she was six and a half years old, uh -huh. uh, she had made it almost an hour, which yeah. was pretty impressive for that age, but she started to lose interest, and so what I did is I started picking up rocks in the river and showing her all the bugs that were down there and then showing her the fly box and having her pick selections out of my fly box that looked like the natural bugs that were on the rocks. And then we tied those on and went back out in the river. So it got her to come back out and fish for about another hour. Right, interactive. Keeping it fun yeah. is very, very important for the kids. Keeping it fun and not too technical. That's great, and it really is all about keeping it fun. But let's not forget to be prepared. Being prepared is huge when it comes to having kids out here. You want to make sure you have plenty of snacks, food for the kids, and tons of water, more than you actually think you need. Scott, what would be some of your top tips for the parents? Uh, number one would be the High Sierra Cologne. Yes. Some type of bug spray. Um, they have lots of products out there. They have DEET products and they have natural products out there for those who don't want to put the deed on their kids, which mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend. It's pretty toxic stuff, so use some of the other options. And they also have my favorite old time standby, Avon Skin So Soft Bath Oil Spray. You can put it all over everything, the face, the hands, the body, and yeah. not only are you out there avoiding the bugs, you smell good too. Those are awesome tips. <laughs> but also we want to make sure we get good sun protection. Yes. Um, the reflection up here at this elevation is just like being out on snow. Mm -hmm. So you have to sunscreen places that you normally wouldn't. Um, I like to bring a hat along that has a shield in the back that covers the ears and the back of the neck. Um, lots of sunscreen in the nose and nostril area, lips underneath the chin because all the reflection coming up just like off of the snow. Right. And because the weather changes so rapidly up here, a very good idea would be an extra jacket and pants just in case the weather changes. Very smart. Extremely smart. 
Scott, you have all the best tips. Thank you so much. I am personally looking so forward to going fishing with you very soon. I need to learn a thing or two still. It's been so long, but thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. And you guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you out here on the lakes with your kids. It's so beautiful. I'd love to share it with you guys. And thank you for tuning in again. This has been your reminder that the mountains are calling.